Aloha everyone, Michelle Malin is with Blossom Inner Wellness and StandTogetherHawaii.com. I want to do a compilation of understanding global warming, understanding what is happening in Maui and what the governor has in store and has had in store for Maui. We're going to be, I'm going to be showing you videos of him at the United Nations. I'm going to be showing you videos about the smart city that he has proposed for Maui and the work force housing that he keeps talking about. What is that and what to expect? And the best thing about this video is how we can take action. If you live in the Hawaii Islands, if you love Hawaii, if you've never been here and you want to come to a free, beautiful, amazing islands in the Pacific, you can take action with us. It, it just takes a phone call or an email, your choice. I'm going to give you phone numbers to call and in contacts. We, we want to contact the governor. We want to contact the police chief in Maui, who I'm going to tell you who he is. He's only been with Maui since 2001. So what is that? Two years. Came from Las Vegas, stripped, totally not aloha at all. A bully, in my opinion. And um, But I'm going to tell you, we, we need to contact them we need to be bombarding them with, with phone calls and emails and telling them to stop what they're doing and start to support the people. And um, that's the action we can take. So StandTogetherHawaii.com. Let's get started with uh, this compilation video for you guys. Pictures that you will, will be easy to understand because that level of destruction in a fire hurricane, something new to us in this age of global warming, was the ultimate reason that so many people perished. So he talks about global warming and a fire hurricane being the main cause of, for the destruction of all the people. But he doesn't talk about the fact that in 2018, there was a report done that stated that Lahaina had the highest fire danger. There was brush that was not cleared around Lahaina, no fire breaks, no escape routes. Um, it also has issues with water. So this is um, Maui's emergency operations chief, Herman Anandea. Now he has since put in his resignation. He has since put in his resignation, but he lacked formal experience and he beat out 40 other applicants, 40 other applicants for this job. And basically this guy was hired in August of 2017 with no expert emergency management experience at all. His qualification was being chief of staff for the then mayor, Alan Arakawa. But uh, so he actually had the only experience that he had was online FEMA training and workshops. That was it for this guy who did not put out the best emergency warning system in the world the best emergency warning system in the world and he did not do it and he actually stated that um where is it at it's right here the outdoor warning sirens he said oh you know those are for tsunami and he was worried about people going up the hill because of the tsunami okay people aren't ridiculous this the all hazard siren system can be used for a variety of both natural and human caused events, including tsunamis, hurricanes, dam breaches, flooding, wildfires, and volcanic eruptions, terrorist threats, hazardous material incidences, and more. But wildfires is on that list, and he did not do that. The other thing I wanna share with you, and I'm just gonna to check to make sure, and I have to do this this way, I can't do a screen share because the internet's not that great, so um, I have to do it this way, but anyway. This is from the DLNR. So the governor says it's because of fire, hurricane, and global warming. Well, what about this governor? Hawaiian activists at DLNR block release of water for fire because of a tarot patch that uh, had priority. The West Maui Land Company was sent a letter to Deputy Director Kaleo uh, of the Hawaii Commission on Water Res Resource Management describing the events of the communication problems that resulted in delaying the diversion of streams to fill reservoirs with water being made available to, the fi to fight the fire. So Governor Green, as well as that, the Hawaii Electric Company kept the power flowing in Lahaina, even though Lahaina had the top highest 
fire danger of all of the towns in Maui, and there was hurricane winds. So they, and there was down power poles. There was 29, in fact, says right here, some 29 fully energized poles fell across roads in West Maui that day. And when it's still not clear what caused the fire, okay. In my last video, I shared what I believe was the cause of the fires, but I'm not gonna go into that in this video because this one I really want it to be about understanding the truth about global warming and what is coming for Maui. What is coming is smart cities and AI uh, be governing the entire island. And I'm gonna show you proof of this, you guys. I'm gonna have all the links below, plus all the links are on standtogetherhawaii.com. So the next thing I wanna show you is what did the police do to support the people leaving the fire? Leaving when the fire was right behind them. And this is crazy. This was a, a local police form blockade prevented people from evacuating Lahaina wildfires, Mau Maui residents claims. Here is what he says. I think we should get out of here because of the speed of this wind. It could be here in two minutes. And so about what time was this at? By the way, if you guys don't know who this is, this is Fish. He's been sitting next to Cheeseburger in Paradise selling the most awesome stuff, right, for years. He's a, uh, he's like a legend. And uh, everyone loves Fish. And Fish loves everybody. He's one of the wisest person, people that I know, by the way. Anyway, Fish, continue. So I went around back to Front Street, and there was all the cars were lined up, but none of them were moving. And I walked all the way from Safeway to the chart house, not one car had moved. And I was wondering what was stopping the traffic. But it was a policeman. And I got to the end and I looked up north, there were no obstructions. There was no reason to keep those cars there. Are you serious? I'm serious as a heart attack. And I, I said, what are you doing? He goes, well, I'm under orders to keep them here. And I said, the fire is, is right around Safeway. It's going to hit Front Street. You know, these people got to get out of here. And he said, I'm following orders. No way. And I, and I okay, so now I want to show you guys what the cops are telling people when they're supposed to get these placards. You're supposed to get a placard that literally shows that they're a local and they can go into Lahaina and out of Lahaina freely so that they actually deserve to be there. But here's what this officer has to come and say after being in line for, out for, for many hours. <laughs> Today, there was an announcement that people could get in line to get placards who were residents or volunteers to get into the impacted area and beyond. There is currently very limited access and people are not able to get to their homes and they're concerned if they leave to get supplies, they won't be able to get back in. And so there was a system set up where people could go get this, and for, you know, these identifying stickers and put them in their vehicles so they could get through the checkpoints in and out. Well, after waiting in line for hours and hours, they pretty much announced that right here, that now it is worthless. They're, they're revoking the program and they're not going to use it anymore. It's going back to the old system. And I'll kind of move out of the way for you here to read that. So take a <clears throat> screenshot if you want to read the rest of that. Public service announcement from the police department that due to the overwhelming demand, again, blaming the people, they're discontinuing the service so people no longer can get back in. So I wanted to, uh, to release that, but I wanted to show you guys, you know, there was on, when, on uh, Raylene's thing right there, she was talking about the police chief being uh, connected to the Vegas shootings. He was a, he was a police person there. I don't, I don't know about that. I haven't looked that up. But, um, but this is our police chief in Maui, and he got here in 2021, so only two years ago, and he uh, already has many, many complaints uh, toward him from the Maui police 
department. But here's what he has to say right now uh, about what's happening in Lahaina. And this was, this is on, this is a couple days ago, August 17th. We're adding, because of the Department of Transportation, a dust screen, which does a couple things. It actually blocks the dust and the debris with the winds coming out, but it also obstructs the view, which is a good thing because we don't need people stopping over on the side and trying to exploit some of the different things that are going in. It and I want to pause that. Some of the different things that are going in. What is going into Lahaina that they don't want us to see? It's large scene. And so we're going to ask that you travel to and from where you need to go and you don't pull over because you're going to be warned and then you're going to be towed. They have shut down our ability to fly drones in West Maui, which was not the case immediately after the fire. And personally, I'm wondering what changed. Now, you see the red box there. That covers most of the zone that burned, or maybe all of it. And this was not a problem, uh, you know, a few days after the, the fire. When this happened, we went down, and luckily we got a lot of good, high-quality 4K footage. That's why we can't have you walking down there. Mm -hmm. And we had to arrest somebody for trespassing. And so if we want to keep doing this. So this is a f supposedly a free country. And these people just lost their home. And what wildfire puts up a screen? Okay, I was, my, my mom lives in Chico, 20 minutes south of Paradise. And Paradise was the first place I had my, uh, well, I had my second job was in Paradise. And I went up there after the fires in Paradise. They were very weird, look exactly like the ones in um, in Maui with the me the melting of the of the tires in the cars, which I'm going to show you later. Even my mom wrote, texted me and said it looks just like Paradise. Yeah, it does, and there's a reason for that. And again, if if you want to watch that video that I did, um, I'll put the link in below. But but my point is, they didn't put a screen for the for the dust, and they didn't say you know, to exploit the things that are going in. What is going into Lahaina that they don't want us to see? I, I don't know, but I have an idea and I'll show, you, I'll show you guys what that is. Next thing I wanna share with you is who this guy is. He is the uh, John Pelletier, was commander of the tourist district that includes Las Vegas Strip before he became Maui police chief in December of 2021. He has no laid back island transplant, Aloha, uh, Pelletier said as he approached the podium to speak at Monday's news conference. This was three days ago, so it was uh, August, well actually, I don't know when this was. But anyway, that's who this guy is, and I feel in my heart that he's a total bully. Uh, the other thing I wanted to show you was that there are things that um, he is being... Uh, he is being complained. He's being reported on. Her report shed light on complaints against the MPD Maui Police Department chief. Investigators found chief likely violated policy but could not substantiate all allegations. Police chief John Pelletier likely violated the Maui County's violence in the workspace policy by yelling and swear swearing during a meeting with the Maui Police Department business administrator who left in tears according to an investigator investigation into allegations that Pelletier and others violated county policy. That's who this guy is in Maui. Maui. I want to explain the island of Maui and what it is and what it means to these Hawaii islands. Every single island here on the chain of the Hawaii islands is a different chakra. The, the island, the big island, the, root, the one I live on, is the root chakra. That, you know, Pele, red, fire, uh, safety, destruction, life. That's all the root chakra. Maui is the heart. Maui is the heart chakra of the Hawaii Islands. Oahu is the throat, the city, the capital, Honolulu, speaking out. And Kauai is the crown chakra. But, but Maui is the heart. And we have this guy who is a bully who worked in Las Vegas, our police, the police chief in Maui, I, I don't see how that was a good fit, uh, except for certain things that are coming to Maui, which we as people have a voice, but we have to speak it. We've gotta take our heart into our throat and speak our truth 
to these people because there's more of us than there are of them. And if they get bombarded with thousands of people calling their offices, emailing them, saying, we do not want Maui to be a smart city. We do not want AI in Maui. We do not want you to take over the land, which I'm going to be showing you in a second. And not giving the, the people, the Hawaiian, the, uh, the Hawaiian um, people, their voice. Where's their voice? It's through all of us. That's where their voice is. Okay, next part. Carefully to what he has to say. This is the governor of, of Hawaii, Josh Green. Attorney General to explore options to do a, a moratorium on any sales of properties that have been uh, damaged or destroyed. So first of all, he wants to do a moratorium on any sales. Who the fuck does he think he is? He, he cannot stop. If somebody wants to sell, they, he has no right, no right to, to stop any sale. Like who is he to stop somebody's sale? I mean, and granted, I, I hope they do not sell. I'm praying that they do not sell. But who is he to say what people can and cannot do? Uh, moreover, I would caution people that it's going to be a very long time before any growth or housing can be built. And so you will be pretty poorly informed if you try to steal land from our people and then build here. He's not the, they're not the ones telling you. Last night, amongst colleagues of mine, people I trust, we're hopeful to create a memorial for the people of the state of Hawaii in this site. Um, oh, so who is we? We, we and the people that he trusts? What about the people who's lost their land? Where's their voice? What do, what do they want for that land? We're already thinking about ways for the state to acquire that land so that we can put it into workforce housing, to put it back in. I want to just repeat that. I'm already thinking about ways for the state to acquire that land so that we can put it into workforce housing. To put he, so we can put it into workforce housing. Workforce housing. He said this many times. I'm already looking for a way for the state to acquire the land, to put it back, to put it into workforce housing, to put it back into families. I don't think so. What does that mean? Like, who is he? Think he is. Families, or to make it open spaces in perpetuity as a memorial to people who were lost. But we don't want this to become uh, a clear space where then, yes, people from overseas just come and decide they're going to take it. The state will take it and preserve it first. Governor. As you can see, this just it just boils my blood because who does he think he is? We? He goes, we? Who is we? Because it's for sure not the people who live there. It's for sure not the Kanaka whose land that is. You know, we, uh, I'm looking for ways for the state to acquire the land, to turn it into workforce housing. I'm going to show you another place where the word workforce is. This is Maui County Finance Director to serve as National AI Artificial Intelligence Committee. Maui County Finance Director Scott Tara Yu, whatever his name is, has been appointed to a national exploratory committee that will look into how artificial intelligence could potentially help local government. The Artificial Intelligence Exploratory Committee established by the National Association of Counties will examine emerging policies, practices, and potential applications of AI, as well as its consequences, according to a Maui County news release. The 15 committee members representing elected and appointed county officials from across the country will focus on examining county governance policies and practices, operations and services for consist constituents, public trust, privacy and security issues and workforce productivity and skills development. Okay, what is this workforce? What is this about? Very, very interesting. So now I want to go back to um, uh, exclusive. Okay, I'll finish with that. So this is Governor Green goes to the UN to talk about Hawaii. In touted Hawaii sustainability accomplishments at the United Nations Economic and Social Council in New York City. The governor was the keynote speaker in the forum that included more than 40 presenters from around the world. Green pointed out that Hawaii is in a unique position as an island state and has tried to lead the way in promoting renewable energy. 
we tried to lead on energy and climate, we were the first state to mandate 100% renewable energy uh, for electricity. So it's again an opportunity as a small state with technically a small footprint, but we do punch above our weight a little bit because of our position in the Pacific. Speakers were invited to help implement the United Nations Agenda for Sustainable Development Goals in 2030. So United Nations Sustainability Goals, who are these United Nations? I think it's 179 or 76 countries. Did you elect them? I didn't elect them. And, and what are their sustainability goals? Let me talk about that. I was going to actually um, put that on on here, but it's actually on my phone, so I'm just gonna read it what, what it is and then I'll share the link below because I share all of these links below so you can find it for yourself, you can research it for yourself. All of these links will also be on standtogetherhawaii.com. The 17 goals for the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs, they sound really good, but let me, I'll explain more to you guys. No poverty, hmm. zero hunger, good. Good health and well-being, interesting. Quality education, who's, who's deciding on that curriculum? Gender equality, because everybody knows how important gender equality is. Clean water and, and sanitation. Uh, number seven, affordable and clean energy. Affordable. Decent work, decent, decent work. Not work that you love, but decent. Decent work and economic growth. Industry, innovation, and infrastructure. Re reduced reduced inequalities, reduced inequalities. Who's deciding on what inequalities are and are not? Sustainable cities and communities, who's gonna decide on what that is and what that means for people and our freedom and our privacy? Responsible consumption and production. So all sounds great, right? Climate action, let me show you, I'm gonna show you toward the end of what climate really means and climate uh, change really means. Life below water, 15, life, and land, boy, they're hitting everything. They're hitting every aspect of our lives. And the last two, uh, peace and justice and strong institutions. Peace and justice and strong institutions. That should be everybody's freaking out. It should be understanding what that means because that means taking away our freedom, taking away our privacy. Who do these people think they are? Because they are not for the people. They sound like they are. The last one is partnerships for the goals. Partnerships for the goals. So I'm gonna leave the link in the description. You guys can look it up for yourself. And all of these may sound really good, but they, that means that they are going to be mandating new rules. The, you know, Governor Green says that he's gonna be, um, or actually it was Congresswoman Jill, ugh, there's some of these last names I cannot get, Tucker, anyway, Jill, Congresswoman Jill, Senator, she's actually, no, she's a Congresswoman. She actually said that they're gonna be partnering with the federal government uh, and super excited about FEMA coming in, even though FEMA's not doing jack for Maui. But when you partner with the federal government, that means a lot of red tape and a lot of rules that you have to follow in order to get help. And this 17 goals of the, um, uh, Oh, 17 goals of the, or I just want to make sure, United Nations, Department of Economic and Social Affairs, Sustainability Development. That means a lot of rules and a lot of freedoms taken away and putting in what they believe or they want as sustainable and education, educating our keiki on what they feel needs to be educated instead of what we do. So we all need to wake up, <laughs> start to smell the coffee, because we, we have to start speaking up. I'm not done, almost, almost there. Stay with me, you guys, because this next part's pretty interesting. So let me show you this. The state of Hawaii, the state of Hawaii, uh, the state of Hawaii's global goal to obtain 40% of the electric power generation for renewable energy by 2030. Super interesting, smart grid. Why can't we pull energy out of thin air? No matter where you go around the world, reducing our impact on the environment and decreasing our dependence on fossil fuels is on everyone's mind. But how do you do it in a way that's going to benefit the most people? That was the question Hitachi asked before initiating the Jump Smart Maui project. This initiative demonstrates how electric vehicles, smart grids, and renewable energy like wind and sun can benefit Maui's residents 
and it underlines the positive impact that Hitachi is making on the environment. It's our future. Oh yeah, no, I hope not. Because let me just tell you something about this smart, uh, I wanna tell you something about this smart energy. First of all, if everybody goes around in an electric car and the grid goes down, we're screwed. We, <laughs> we have no way of transportation. Did you know that the, the batteries in, coal, in the electric cars are made of cobalt are actually um, manufactured and found in the most poverty-stricken areas of the world? I believe it's um, in Africa somewhere. And that that is absolute poison for the people who are uh, mining it. It actually kills them. And plus, the, the, um, the energy that is used in these cars, and I wish I had this put up, but I, I don't, but you can look it up for yourself, is actually a higher pollutant than the fossil fuels. With the engines, the, the way that they are right now with fossil fuels, it burns more cleanly uh, than what it takes for these batteries for these electric cars. Plus, if the grid goes down and everybody's got you know sustainable energy, this means control. This means they can turn off your car, they can turn off your house, they can, um, you know, it's what they want to do with the central bank digital currency, which is controlling our money, controlling, programming, and tracing our money with the central bank digital currency. So I know I'm speaking a lot, and I know that this is, sounds scary, but I just want to give a little bit of hope. I'm not done yet. And understanding that we all came here to play this game called being in a human body. And we do what's in our heart. We do what we feel is our kuleana, what is our responsibility to do. And that's all we do. And then we leave the rest up to a higher power. And we connect with that higher power. I'm not done with the things I want to show you, almost. But the biggest thing I want to share around what we can do is to make things right in our own hearts, with ourselves, and with our family, and with our friends. You know, if you guys are angry at somebody, clean it up. You know, just recognize that we're all doing the best we can. Every single person here on the planet right now is going through some major trauma, major emotional trauma, and it can come out as being a total bitch. I've been there. I've cleaned up my stuff as best as I can with friends and, uh, and with family members as best as I can. Because it has to start with us. It has to start with our energy and our love for ourselves first, self-love, self-compassion, then compassion for other people, realizing that we're all trying to get through this time and doing the best we can, and then create a really good relationship with your higher power. The frequency that's around us, this energy, this empty space, it's not empty. This is a frequency field that connects to my energy, and what I feel goes into the empty space, the frequency field, and makes a difference in the world. So if each one of us cleans up our stuff with our friends and with our family, that's gonna help Maui. That's gonna help the planet. You know, they want us afraid, but if we get, there's two energies, fear and love, and everything in between is the rest of it. Fear and love, what are you gonna choose? What are you gonna choose, fear or love? So I just wanted to share that. Uh, let me go to finish off what I wanted to share with you guys. This is a really quick one. I don't know. I don't know if this is, you know, um, this is from the Japan-U.S. Collaborative Smart Grid Demonstration Project in Maui Island of Hawaii. This is um, again. I'll send the. I'll share the link. But basically, the smart cities. I just want to show you a map of what they want to do. They want to create these. I'm, I'm scrolling down because I'm getting to the map right here. So this is a map of where they're going to put these fast chargers and uh, start to create the smart city. And this is the map of the fires. Okay, was there, is, there, is this a coincidence? Here, here, and again, this is the map for the, um, the smart city. So I just wanted to show you that. This Governor Green's anti-housing proclamation that he did, I think it was in July, from this is from the Sierra Club of Hawaii. Uh, okay, it's unconstitutional. This is a Governor Green last month, so I think this was in July or June, unveiled his long hinted at emergency proclamation, emergency proclamation on housing and Sierra Club attorney, David Kimo 
Frankel perhaps sums it up best. It's unconstitutional, it's anti-Hawaiian, it's anti-environment, and it's anti-democratic. Um, and it says, ironically, it is also anti-housing, at least for most locals and especially for those struggling with housing in, in, in security. So the, this proclamation pursues uh, yeah, pursues is the that if we build a massive amount of housing all at once and make it available to all, housing prices will drop. But here's the thing. Anybody can purchase this. Anybody can purchase housing. So this is a big if, especially since corporate developers themselves would compromise their own potential profit margins if they build too quickly and make units affordable to those struggling to make ends meet. And if they did, story after story of locals unable to compete against overseas home buyers and investors will cash in hand, with cash in hand and a real estate industry that acknowledges the ongoing global, global desires of the wealthy to move to Hawaii. Foretelling the predictable outcome, new units built under the proclamation will be marketed and sold to those who can and will immediately pay for them. And um, so this is, I don't wanna read the whole thing, I'm gonna leave you guys so you guys can read it, but Governor Green's anti-housing proclamation, and this was August of 2023 before the fires. So uh, this is something you guys gotta know about with, with Maui, with what's coming. And what else is next? Ah, yeah, okay, I already explained that one. Okay, so the last three things I wanna share, last three things. This one, this is a, well, I'm just gonna tell you, this is a former meteorologist shares about what global warming is. Here we go. Meteorologist Noah National Weather Service. My guest today is David Dilly. Thank you, Tom, for having me on again. It's a pleasure to be here. I'm a former meteorologist at NOAA, National Weather Service, United States Air Force, currently senior researcher, meteorologist, climatologist at Global Weather Oscillations Incorporated. 50 years of experience in meteorology and climatology. So I'm going to be able to show you a few things. And working partner with the International Hurricane Protection Association. I have developed what we call climate pulse technology. I'm going to show you a little bit about that. It is proven science, and we're going to take a look at the Milinkovitch cycles, which is proven cycles for climate, and the subset cycles that I have looked at. It is essentially the electromagnetic interactions between the Earth, Moon, Sun. Everything in the universe and Earth is electromagnetic. Specialize in hurricane landfall predictions. We predict the landfalls where they're going to occur six months before seizing the evening. Okay, I don't want to, that's kind of boring, but, and he's a little bit on the monotone side, but um, just spare with me because he's going to talk about what global warming is. About a 230 year okay, cycle. Let me go back a little bit. Site in the climate section, we have some videos. First of all, global warming. What is global warming? Where does it come from? Let's just touch on it quickly. Global warming begins in the Arctic and Antarctic. About a 230 year cycle, global warming comes back again. Uh, when it comes back, it takes about 20 years for it to hit its peak. It started in the 1990s, hit its peak uh, this past year. So global warming, what happens is the Antarctic and Arctic warm up. And as it warms up, you have less cold air available to filter southward into the mid-latitudes, and it warms the mid-latitudes. That is global warming. Well, global cooling also begins at the two poles. In 2022, the Arctic had the coldest spring and summer on record. Last year. Boy, can you have that during global warming? Coldest spring and summer on record. And I just checked uh, what's going on up there now. And in April, they're again running below normal temperatures this year. So they'll probably have a, a cold spring, summer again. So the uh, Arctic is cooling down. In 2021, the Antarctic had its coldest winter on record. Global warming, I'm telling you. So what happens? Okay, 
so we have colder air available and that starts to filter southward and eventually you have global cooling it doesn't come on overnight uh, we get uh, bits and pieces of it like we did this winter especially out on the west coast uh, but it's like global warming it takes about uh, 15 20 years for it to really get entrenched and hit its peak uh, so it, it's coming and it's going to get worse and worse is global warming is the current global okay. warming cycle though caused by the rise in so um, I'm just going to stop there because um, he talked about CO2 and I already did another video on that in my last video about CO2, how it is not related to CO2. Well, actually, let me just go to the graph that he talks about because uh, and then that's and then I want to take you to one more other guy. Uh, yeah. So let's just I'll just show you that. I detail everything about the carbon dioxide and the uh, findings were that since 1850, NOAA and IPCC says the rise in carbon dioxide is 100% fossil fuel. However, on the, uh, over on the right, in the green, my research using some uh, peer-reviewed journal data and some of my own research shows that the rise is 80% natural. A Peer reviewed, uh, reviewed journal printed uh, this past year by Scrabble et al. They are three physicists and they found a formula that uh, separates the various isotopes and their findings. Rising carbon dioxide is 80% natural. And then peer reviewed data on plants to matter, 80% natural. So it is 80% natural, we're at a natural cycle on carbon dioxide, and it did not cause global warming. Proven science. You can Google it for whatever you want. Mick uh, Milankovic cycles of the Earth Moon Sun interactions, electromagnetic cycles. Essentially, this is what it is the uh, Earth goes around the sun in a elliptical path. Every 120,000 years, it comes, the Earth becomes closest to the sun. And then about 60,000 uh, 60, years later, it's the furthest approach from the sun, greater distance. So the bottom half of this is all ice age, very cold due to uh, less sunshine, and also the tilt in our axis. Our closest approach was 8,000 years ago. We were warmer six to 8,000 years ago than we were today. The reason was we were the uh, closest approach to the sun and came out of an ice age. We're 8,000 years off the peak now. We're actually cooling down. So I wanted to share that, but I also want to share one other thing from the um this guy is patrick moore he's one of the founders of greenpeace and exclusive greenpeace founder patrick moore says climate change based on false narratives and he said that in an email obtained by the epoch times that his reasons for leaving greenpeace were very clear greenpeace was hijacked by the political left when they realized there was money and power in the environmental movement Political activists in North America and Europe changed Greenpeace from a science-based organization to politically political fundraising organization. And that's what Moore said. He uh, left Greenpeace in 1986, 15 years after he co-founded the organization. Uh, he says the environmental movement has been more of a political movement than an environmental movement. They, they are primarily focused on creating narratives, stories that are designed to instill fear and guilt into the public so the public will send them money. And he said that uh, they mainly operate behind closed doors with other political operatives in the United Nations, UN, World Economic Forum, and so on, all which are primarily political in nature, and the last thing I'll share is the inter intergovernmental panel on climate change is not a science organization. 
He said, it's a political organization composed of the World Meteorology, Meteorological Organization of the United Nations Environmental Program. So uh, that's what I wanted to share. You know, I was sent pictures of uh, wheels and being melted and, and all of this stuff, and, and that's not a natural fire. Many, many firefighters are, are saying this was not natural. So I'm not, I'm not gonna go into the fire and how I, because again, the, that video of questioning Maui fires, why you should, is gonna be in the link below. Um, I don't know if you can see that or not. But anyway, again, get clean with your relationships and with yourself. We have to have our own frequency high in aloha and in love and in compassion for ourselves first, then for our general community and then sending that to Maui. The, the link to help locals is in the description below. There's a direct link to Ohana that have GoFundMes on Maui. There's, you can also go to Maui Food, I think Food Bank, Maui Food Bank and HungerHeroesHawaii.com is the, those are local. Uh, do not donate to the Red Cross, do not donate to FEMA, they're not helping Maui Island. And my action or my request for the, the action is to contact the police department, contact the mayor, contact the governor, the links are below, contact all, our, all of our representatives. There's one email that you can just send and it'll go out a blast to all of the um, representatives and tell them, save Maui! Stop with the blockades. We the people want this to end. We want our people in Maui to have their food and water and support that they need. Stop closing it off to the media. We have a right to see what is happening in Maui Island. So if you just take two minutes, not even, it won't even take two minutes. It'll take a minute, it'll probably take 30 seconds to contact the governor, go to standtogetherhawaii.com, take action, Contact the governor, there's a link, it's super easy. It says take action, it gives you an, uh, an email that you can model, change it however you want. You can, uh, it has a link to the governor, a link to the representatives on the state of Hawaii, the two senators that are represent the state of Hawaii, um, and also the media, it has a link to all of the media outlets, contact them, and then I'm actually gonna add the link in to the uh, Maui police, so we can get them bombarded with all of us saying, you need to be Pono with, the, with Maui Island. You need to be Pono with the people and telling Josh Green that we do not consent to a smart city, we do not consent to AI governing the island, and we do not consent to his workforce housing. And we also, he cannot say that, oh, we want a moratorium for all the people who've lost their lives here. How does he know what the people want? what the Kanaka want with their land. It's not his land, and who is we, he keeps talking about, because it's not the people, it's not the people of Maui. So please take action below. It'll take you 30 seconds to contact these people. Just write something out and send it in. And then get clean, get your energy clean when your heart, for yourself first, and compassion for everything we've all been through, because man, we're going through it. And then clean up your relationships. Who doesn't care who's right and wrong, doesn't matter. What matters is what's in our hearts and that connecting with the higher frequency and the energy that's around us. This is our power, you guys. Our heart is our power. Staying in your heart and staying in aloha. And man, I've, I've been through the ringer myself. I have not been very nice to some people and I had to clean up my own stuff. So you do it too, let's do it together. And we'll send that love to Maui because she seriously needs it. So sending you much love from the Big Island of Hawaii.